Oh, hi there. Uh, so, a week ago, we did a test at Lake Powell, video, and basically what I'm trying to figure out is I shot two sheets of film back to back, exactly the same settings, exactly the same everything, at least that was the intention. Uh, I shot FP4+, Plus. we developed one sheet of each holder in DDX at the recommended time, which is, I think was 10 or 10 and a half minutes. Then we took the other sheet, which should be identical in every way, and developed it in 510 Pyro at the recommended time, which was, I think, eight and a half minutes. Uh, the goal here was to see how the negatives looked, if they looked different, what the staining looks like with 510 Pyro versus a more standard developer. And then, really though, the goal is to see how they print. So, I don't expect them to be the same, necessarily. Although, it wouldn't surprise me if they were pretty close. So, let's look at the negatives here real quick. I've got, we'll just show one example, right? So, here they are. You probably can't see any difference there. Let's, let's put them on something that's lit, right? So don't mind all the shadows. Standard developer, standing developer. Standing developer turns the entire sheet of film, everything it touches, this crazy orange, yellow color. And so what we're gonna do is print these side by side, exactly the same in platinum. The idea with standing developer is that it specifically blocks UV which means the light that we're using for platinum printing. So maybe it'll be higher contrast. Maybe it'll be different or better in some way. I've never really played with this and this felt like the easiest way to see what that looks like. And I happened to get a really cool portrait of my buddy Ken, who manages Lower Antelope Canyon at Ken's Tours while we were in the process. So uh, we're gonna warm up our bulbs for five minutes, because my fluorescents like to be warmed up before they're used. While that is happening, we're gonna mix emulsion for two prints. I'm gonna coat them at the same time using the same brush, using the same chemistry. We're going to expose them at the same time for the same time. At the same time for the same time. Like I'm doing this the same, as much the same as I possibly can, just to see. Uh, they're pretty thin negatives, to be honest. I could have given myself another stop. You could always give yourself another stop. And I probably... So we followed the manufacturer's directions for 510 Pyro for continuous agi agitation, because we're running ours in a Jobo. Taylor said, and I agree, that that was maybe not enough time, eight minutes. We feel like we could have pushed another stop or more which is what used to be standard for pyro. Old pyro, you shoot it at half box speed or you push in development. Uh, I shot these both at box speed. It's FP4+, plus. I shot it at 120. I overexposed these sheets. I underexposed the other sheets just to see. So let's see. Um, we'll mix up a couple of emulsions and coat two sheets of paper and see what's going on. This is like that thing where you pat your head and rub your belly at the same time. It's kind of messing with my brain. I'll go get a brush. Whee. Good. One down, one to go. Oh yeah, those are ready. Let's rock and roll. So... Standard. So given what that looks like, I would probably call this like four, maybe five minutes. Given what this looks like, I would call this more like three minutes. So let's do four. We'll do four minutes right down the middle. Let's see what the answer is. I am using a split back contact frame in such a way that I cannot split the back. Uh, we're just gonna rock and roll here at four minutes and see what happens. Five minutes? Four minutes? 
Four minutes. Five minutes? I don't know. Uh, we'll see. We'll pick a time and we'll make an exposure, but I won't be able to check if it's like right until it's done. Anyway. And timer. Let's just go for it. Five minutes. Please. Boom. Oh, gotta forget our eye protection. Here we go. All right, now we're good. <laughs> Same thing again. Uh, we're rushed for time, so we're kind of cruising along. Uh, slightly more emulsion, because that was a short coat and I didn't feel great about it. Um, those were eight drops a piece, and this is gonna be more like 10 drops a piece. So here we go. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, five, six, seven, eight, and then just two each of this. One, two, one, two. Oh yeah, that's way better. And again, whee! Great. This, by the way, uh, is what your brush looks like. Tell me if I get too close. Uh, when it's too dry and you've gone entirely too far with it, uh, yeah, you don't want the separation to happen like this, how I can just like tweak apart any part of the brush, how it tends to want to do one of those. Not the best. Oh well. Let me hop on the Discord. See what's going on in Discord land today. Five minutes. Okay, so first peek. I got enough exposure for printout. We're gonna leave those for a second. I'm gonna go set up my development tray, so come with. <laughs> nice dry tray. I love it. We'll use moderately fresh developer. Um, yeah. Just rock and roll. Wow. Okay, this is interesting. And honestly, mostly what I expected to see. Um, this is gonna be too dark. This is the pyro, because it really wants a three minute uh, exposure instead of five. And this is the DDX. So right away, you can tell there's a drastic difference in how these are gonna behave. Yes? I've never done this before, so we'll see if this works. Now, this negative had drastically more density, so it looks a lot better, kind of a lot more like it's supposed to. This is overexposed in terms of the print. The negative itself is thin, so underexposed. Hmm. This actually looks flatter to me. Like the contrast from here to here versus here to here. And we may bias towards the 510 sheet, which again is thinner than we sort of expect and or want it to be. And see, this is gonna be more like, I think, two and a half minutes. Because this sheet that I have of Lone Rock which is usually like water and then this big dumb rock sticking out of the water. Now it's all just land because the lake is drying up. It's thin. And put these guys here. So here's the two sheets. Incredibly short exposure time for a platinum print because you can see straight through the whole damn thing. Nowhere is there enough shadow to block. 
light properly as opposed to the FP4 Plus. So. so drastically different. Okay, let's look. There's the two films shot at exactly the same time, at the same, well not exactly, like a, a minute apart, at the same settings, with the same film, just developed to two different developers. Two and a half minutes. This is much more like five minutes. Please. Boom. It's actually kind of a drastic difference. Which could be that I was supposed to overexpose the film, which used to be a thing with pyro. Which would make sense if you're aiming for contrast, you would typically hit it pretty hard and then develop it specifically for contrast. We'll see. Let's just see. Let's just see. I'm gonna drop these into the tray this time, make my life a little bit easier. Pyro. And not. Hello. All right. Um, and you, the effect from this being in focus and this being in focus, but not this was intended. But even with close to what I would say a proper exposure, this is flat and not great. It's the opposite result of what I expected. I expected higher contrast, much more beautiful, whatever even from a slightly thin negative. And I'm not getting that, I'm getting flatter prints from 510, which is possibly could hold more detail, but I don't know, interesting. It's very strange. I'm gonna clear these out real quick and then we'll just force dry them and we'll take a look at them dry, see what they actually look like. Cause you can't judge a print wet. It's not allowed. Every time you do it, you meet with suffering. You guys like my washing technique? It's like washing the clothes, but they're prints. Okay, that was a great wash. Let's go dry these bad boys down. Okay, so let's just, let's just see about all this. Conclusion is I have no conclusion. So here we are. We've got the DDX side and the pyro side. What I feel like I'm seeing, aside from underdevelopment, which we followed the manufacturer's recommendations and these feel thin to me. I mean, this was a, you saw the video, right? You can go watch it. Uh, high contrast, thermonuclear, outdoor portrait. Platinum should help bring my histogram in a little bit so that I can actually see what's going on. What I feel like Pyro is doing is increasing that effect, which doesn't feel right to me for whatever reason. I feel like I'm getting generally a flatter negative out of Pyro even accounting for the fact that I overexposed this print and underexposed that one. Wait a minute. Shit. Which side is which? I think it goes like this. That actually feels right. Yep, okay, so uh, different from what I said before. Pyro, DDX. Which actually, I kind of, I kind of vibe. Skies are darker, 
it's, uh, I mean, it's straight up darker, like all the way around. We might have to go check the footage and see if when I shot the two sheets of just the landscape, if there was a cloud in the foreground or what was going on here. I'm not super sure. Um, I feel like it was just ridiculously bright the entire half hour we were out here shooting these. And if that's the case, I super don't understand what's happening here. Like, look at the difference in the foreground between these two sheets taken uh, 30 seconds apart. That, that should not be as drastic as that is. You know what I mean? Further testing is required if I want to use 510 Pyro. Why would I want to do that? Well, it's great for stand developing, which DDX is probably less great for. And it's reasonably economical. Uh, the two developers for a bottle is about the same price, but for Pyro, you're gonna get double the volume if you process it standard one to 100. And for, and with Pyro, you can take that one to 100 and make it one to 200. Like you can, you can dilute the developer down and increase your development times if you need to. It also takes up like no room, the bottles are tiny. So on the one hand, I'm here for it. I understand what's going on. On the other hand, I'm not getting a high enough contrast result that I would, that I kind of expected somehow out of a UV standing developer. And that's consistent with what I've seen with all the versions of Pyro Cat developers over time. Standing developers have been lower contrast in my experience printing with my system and my chemistry. Your results may vary. What I think I need to do now is either adjust the way I treat the film, I rate the film, so instead of shooting this at 120, maybe shoot it at more like 80, or increase my development times to hopefully get a little bit more snap out of the process. Because even if I brighten up this print a little bit, I feel like this is just kind of muddy and weird. Whereas I'm getting a little bit more definition out of the DDX, like differences in tones from bush to bush to bush to bush to bush to grass. Whereas in Pyro, it kind of just blahs together in one giant muddy mess. Further testing is required if you're into that sort of thing. I will probably keep playing with this developer as I have time and excess film. Uh, I hate throwing away another six or eight bucks a sheet and not getting a good result. But at the same time, I want to know what this developer is for and how I can use it. If I can use it to pull contrast out of a scene and shrink in my histogram, just crush that in, reduce the contrast of the image, and do that intentionally, sweet. That's just not what I expected, I guess, you know? Anyway, that's my little 510 pyro test. If you wanna try it, we sell it. Uh, and if you wanna just keep doing whatever the manufacturer recommends to all your film all the time and not have to worry about it, that's cool too. I'm not usually the testing guy, I'm just, curious about this. Anyway, see you in the next one.